If you are looking to buy a mid-range GPU around the $350 to $400 price point, should you consider the RTX 2060 Super or should you go with the 5700 XT? Now in today's benchmarks, I'm going to include the 2070 Super and the 5700, but we're going to be mainly focusing on these two Titans right here, which come in both at the same price point. And I'm also going to be testing out the Galax add-in board partner model here and comparing it against the original 2060 Super Founders Edition to see if it's better to go with an aftermarket solution than it is with the OG NVIDIA solution. But with that aside, let's roll those juicy benchmarks for you guys and then get back to the desk. So after those benchmarks, we can recap what went down in some of these titles. Shadows of the Tomb Raider, we saw the 2060 Super from Galax pretty much coming in with the exact same results as the reference cooler. The 5700 XT at 1080p did score a victory, but then at 1440p, it traded blows. Moving over to F1 2019, this was the XT's time to shine, where it did perform better at both 1080p and 1440p. 2060 Supers both performing neck and neck in this title. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 was pretty much at 1080p and 1440p, a neck and neck and neck battle between the three cards. Going over to Dirt Rally 2 continued this trend both at 1080p and 1440p with max detail settings. Now we did test this on a 9900K system at five gigahertz with overclocked memory, and we did cross-reference some of the results on the AMD Zen 2 CPU, especially at 1440p, just to make sure we had no bottlenecks and everything was running smoothly. But Apex Legends was a shining star for the new Navi cards, where the 5700 and then the 5700 XT posted some explosive numbers at 1080p, and then 1440p did the exact same thing. Both the super cards in this title were yet again coming very close. And then moving over to Crisis 3, however, we did see the 2060 Super score a victory both at 1080p and 1440p with the very high preset and SMAA set to 1x. Now moving over to Strange Brigade, and I left this title till last, so I'm gonna be throwing in some extra results here. And we can see at 1080p and both 1440p, they're pretty much trading blows, the 2060 Super and the 5700 XT. And here's the kicker though, when we throw up the overclocked numbers, the 2060 Super Galax card did a little bit better than the Founders Edition 2060 Super. And the 5700 XT, what happened here was undervolting this card was the clear sweet spot for this GPU. The 5700, however, when we overclocked that, it did perform very well and did so without using a whole lot more power. And so analyzing the power consumption figures, the Galax model here for the 2060 Super did a phenomenal job of cooling the card even whilst it was overclocked. 60% fan speeds was easily the sweet spot with its two included 100 mil fans. And also the overclocking results did net roughly a 10% gain, which you can reliably use from day to day use. The 2060 Super just came in a little bit less. So I'd say the Galax Cooler is a better implementation of what add-in board partners can do. 
And I'm going to stop right there with the add-in board partner cards because I don't know why AMD, they would release such a good GPU, but not allow the add-in board partners from day one to implement custom solutions. And it's actually quite frustrating because what we see with the 5700 is that it's got a little bit of overclocking potential with the included cooler. And with the XT, they pretty much use the exact same cooler, but they've just included a back plate and pretty much out of the box, we can see that it's got almost no overclocking potential where you would actually be better off undervolting the card, saving some power and running your card at a cooler temperature. So overclocking, XT, don't recommend it until the add-in board partner cards come out. You've got a 70 mil fan on a card like this. And I'm just not sure what AMD was thinking when they would only decide to release a reference blower card. It reminds me of the R9 290 days all over again. So my recommendation for the XT card would be, if you got it, go into Wattman and then try and find a sweet spot where you could undervolt it and still get good performance out of it. For the non-XT model, you can get a little bit of overclocking performance out of it and it will give numbers that start to come close to that of the XT and you'll save $50 in the process. But just to show you how limited this cooler is, we'll pull up the results here where 82 degrees saw 54% fan speeds with a noise of 51 decibels. Going up to 60% saw the temperatures drop significantly, but again, the noise started picking up really bad. For most add-in board partner cards, 60% is actually a sweet spot that I recommend here on the channel. And then of course, going up to 80% and 100% was just simply unbearable to the point where you could not use this in normal operation without getting a headache. Moving over to an add-in board partner card on the RTX 2060 Super side of things, we can see at auto fan speeds, we're getting very well controlled temperatures. The noise is really low. 60% is again a sweet spot, but even then 80% fan speeds was bearable and we saw the temperatures drop down to 60 degrees. 100% saw the temperatures drop again, but the extra noise was clearly not worth it. So if you're setting a custom fan profile curve on the Galax card, anywhere from 60 to 80% would be your sweet spot range. It just depends on your ears. As for the RTX 2060 Super Founders Edition card, I do prefer the Galax cooler. It's bigger, it's beefier, it weighs about the same. It is a prime example of what AIB partners can do when they get their hands on these cards and make better coolers. Though I would like to see more inputs and outputs on the Galax card where you only get two display outs and a HDMI 2.0 out. And as for the PCIe power connectors, it requires an eight plus six pin. Looking at the dimensions of the card, it comes in at 290 by 50 by 125 mil wide. Going over to the Radeon XT, it comes in at 270 mil by 162 by 43 mil wide. Normalizing the overclocks on both these cards saw the 2060 Super averaging out about 2.07 gigahertz. And then on the memory, I managed to get up to 7,916. So the memory overclocks were quite considerable and the core clocks were decent. Going over to the XT, it was bouncing anywhere from 1.9 to 2 gigahertz when it was overclocked. And then after about 15 minutes, I got this weird green screen. And this was a problem with the software that I talked about in the original 5700 review where I think these cards were simply rushed to market to couple with the new Zen 2 CPUs. And also the funny thing is when I did the original 5700 review, it's still using the same driver set that was released on that day. So it still has that problem of Radeon image sharpening, pretty much crashing when I tested it out in Strange Brigade. Very weird problem. If you wanna see that review, I'll put the link up here. Though contrasting that to the Nvidia side of things with the 2060 Super, you do have a driver set that works really well. I do like the game filter features, the new NV encoder on the RTX series does a really good job. And pulling up the comparison here, you can see that it does the best out of all these four examples. And then of course you do get ray tracing support, but I believe Cyberpunk 2077 is where Nvidia is really focusing on getting the most out of that technology. So I'm gonna wait until that game's released before I can tell you to get hyped about ray tracing. But as it stands with DLSS and other technology included, this really doesn't interest me at all. When I did a comparison on Shadows of the Tomb Raider, I thought that the 4K native image just looked in another league compared to that of the DLSS image. So now with all that out of the way, for this price level, $399, would you go with the 2060 Super or would you go with the 5700 XT? And at this point in time, I would go with the 2060 Super because you can overclock it and still have stability. The 5700 XT gets let down by this included stock cooler. 70 mil fan is just really not kicking it for 2019. I mean, imagine putting a 70 mil fan on a cooler on a 9900K, which juices around 180 watts when it's overclocked to five gigahertz. You just couldn't do it. And that's the reality of it. This cooler here, it just simply sucks. 
And I know that's an oxymoron, but that's what we're getting at with the 5700 XT. If you guys were serious about buying this card, because I believe it does perform better than the 2060 Super, my recommendation would be to wait for the AIB partners that will release some beefed up coolers that'll do a much better job of overclocking and extracting more value, as well as even on stock temperatures, keep things quieter and cooler. But when we contrast that now to the 2060 Super, we can see what a phenomenal job some of the AIB partners are doing on Nvidia's side, and these are allowed to be released from day one with the Founders Edition card. The Galax card here simply performs phenomenally well, noise, temperatures, and does a great job of overclocking, and you've got a bit of RGB bling to go with it. And of course, you've got the whole feature set from the Nvidia drivers, from the Nvidia coder to the game filter, which does a really good job. As we said before, ray tracing and DLSS, not really my thing, but as it stands, I don't sugarcoat anything around here. I'd pick the 2060 Super at this point in time. When the AIB partner cards come through for the 5700 XT, then we can revisit this comparison and see what you're looking at. But lastly, I will say, if you really wanna go with Team Red and you wanna use these reference coolers at this point in time, I'd probably pick the 5700, save yourself 50 bucks and just slightly overclock it and still save some power over the XT and get similar performance. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's double review of these cards. Again, recapping, I think the 2060 Super wins by default due to augmented factors not related to the actual raw technology itself. Though do let us know in the comments section below, which of these would you pick? Do you think my recommendation's good? If you wanna get on AMD, just wait for the AIB partner cards. As for the super cards, I'd go with an add-in board partner. Though speaking of the prices, if you are down under in Australia, Currently, I'm checking out the prices. I think the Super is coming in just a little bit too expensive where you can pretty much pick up an RTX 2070, which will perform a little bit better for the same money. And if you're going to get a 2060 Super when the eBay sales start, that's probably the best time to get one. We'd probably get it for around 550 Aussie dollars, where its current price at 685 Aussie dollars is really stretching it a little bit, especially when we look at it compared to the US price where it's really only available for that price of $399 on UEG. Amazon seems to have all these sellers that want to fleece you at this point in time. So I'm going to leave that affiliate link out of the description for the time being. And you're looking at Galax's store in the US, which is the only place you can get a Galax card from. They're not selling the super cards yet, so I'd like to see that updated as well. And with that aside, if you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.